Uh, welcome to Flory Models Tool Review Time. So today we've got Tamiya's brand new fine engraving system. Now, the way that this actually works is you have your standard handle, like just down in here, okay? So you've got your handle, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day, it's a glorified tool holder, okay? Not too bad. And then what you've got down in here is different uh, fine engraving tools or basically paddle liners things like that all right so down in here we've got a 0.1 millimeter a 0.2 millimeter a 0.3 millimeter and a 0.5 millimeter now the biggest thing that jumps out of you we're just going to get the elephant out of the room straight away is these cost a small fortune this entire set if you wanted to buy it in the uk you get it sent over here shipping probably going to get stung by you know customs as well it's going to set you back around about 60 to 75 pounds for it so again, it's one of those things. But like we often say, if it's a good tool and it works, then really it's priceless. So anyway, quick little bit of history uh, about it before we get into going with these. Traditional sort of pea cutters, you see, you've got the Tamiya one, every day, great for doing straight lines, no problems at all. Then you've got your cheap ones, so we've got the little trumpeter one, which actually I rate very, very highly. Okay, so you've got that one there. We've got uh, the um, MRP uh, scribing system. Again, these are actually pretty good system as well. They do the job very, very nicely. Then you've got my other favorite really is the UMM range from the USA. I love these, it's got the SCR1 and the SCR2. They're my go-to panel line scribers. I really do like those. Then you've got your traditional razor saw. Okay, so you can actually do panel lining with that. I've done it quite a lot actually on this build next to me this time. And then you've got the more sort of, you know, fine ones. So we've got this uh, Klingon star weapon as I call it. Okay, this is actually a uh, fine so 0.3 on one end and then we've got another scriber down here at the other. Very, very fine line ones. And then we've got the uh, Alec uh, Holly scribers 0.15. Again, a lethally sharp tool. Okay, looks like a claw uh, and it's great for doing very fine panel lines. But to be honest with you, Apart from really the UMM one, I've never really got on well with it. And it's one of those things. I found riveting recently using Rosie the Riveters. It's like night and day to any other riveting system that I use. I now love it. I enjoy doing it. Rescribing is still one of those things where I'm looking for that holy grail. So we're going to see exactly what we've got down in here. So looking at this, what you've actually got is the tool itself. So this is just a generic holder, really, at the end of the day. I haven't actually even looked in here. So you've got a, a quick little diagram down the bottom here shows how it's all going to work. So you can put into it either the actual uh, blade ones we've got here or it will take your traditional one. We do have a little cap for it as well by the looks of it as well. All right, so actually you've got is the usual thing. It's just a back end, as you might imagine, just down on here. Okay, and then you've actually got a simple chuck system at the front with a, the sort of collet which is going to screw in hard so nothing new nothing fancy it's quite lightweight to be honest that's obviously aluminium uh, or aluminum okay but actually that's quite nice the first thing that strikes me about it is it's good quality but also it's very very thin it's just literally like holding a pen so it's easier to work with than i think some of the other ones okay so that's really what we've got just there now i'm going to start with the biggest and we'll work smallest because i'm going to do a little demo with this to see how it's going to work now your packaging turns up and you're thinking, oh good, a pack of these. Not quite, unfortunately, you get one. Now this is, and again, it's gonna be a test for the camera here. Very, very small, tiny, tiny, tiny. It weighs uh, virtually nothing. <laughs> okay, but you only get one in the set, which I know is gonna surprise a lot of people who are thinking you're gonna get a lot more, but this then fits in here, okay? then we can just screw that in and that holds in there. And again, it's quite nice. It feels very comfortable. It's very natural to hold it, okay? When you're holding some of the others, you know, you've got the pea cutter, it's quite wheeled, it's clumsy in the hand. You know, even in with some of these other ones, this one I actually quite like because it's a little bit thinner, okay? Uh, these scribers here, to be honest, you've got the blade under the bottom, feels a bit unwieldy. And then these ones here, I always quite like them because of just the feel of them of how they are but in some ways i feel that because the angle of the blade is more towards you i always found it difficult to scribe with it i'm more a case of holding it this way to scribe more naturally with it okay but this actually doesn't feel too bad at all so what we're going to do is i've just sprayed a bit of plastic card here just a little bit of flat black just to see what we've got so this is the 0.5 so I'm just going to first of all just going to pop down. Never touched, used or anything one of these before. And we're just going to have a go and see what we get. 
Oh, that actually is very, very nice. That's quite a nice even pull on that. And I have to say, that felt very, very nice. Now what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna rotate it slightly for me as well. I'm just gonna try and replicate that freehand just to see. I'm gonna put a little swirl into it as well. I just want to see. Yeah, so by its nature, because it's got, it's toothed on the side, it's not gonna be wanting to do any type of swirling. It's more a case of akin to doing straight lines or very, very light curve, okay? So yeah, it does the job, but you can't do tight curves. You're not gonna be doing circles on this. So what we'll try is we will try a circle just to see if we can go around corners. And it's not, it's definitely purely a drag tool. And that isn't gonna go at all. Okay, but that's fine. But as you can see, actually, that's pretty nice on that one, okay? So that is the point five. And what we'll do, we'll make a little chart here, okay? And then what we'll do, we're just gonna get the other ones out. We're gonna have a look at the different patterns they give. And then what we'll do is, so this is the point one, okay? And we'll see the difference. So I'm trying to, and again, these are so small, the only thing that would worry me is losing them, okay? Okay, so this is the point one. And again, we're just gonna place it in, and we're gonna butt up against, and then... Now that is, by its nature, really scratchy. I'm going to try that again, just in case I'm holding it wrong, but that wasn't cutting particularly nice. So I'm just keeping it in. I'm going to double depth that one. And again, to be honest with you, that's really, you can probably see it down in here. It's very scratchy. It's not a nice, this is a perfect trench. This is actually more like a raised. That's not nice at all, okay? So then we're going to freehand it as well, just to see. And again, this one's a lot more nicer freehand than it was on the pole. Let me just try that one more time. And we're going to vary the angle of the blade. It's going to come in more level. And then up high. Yeah, no matter how you tend to pull on that, it doesn't seem to like it too much. We'll try one more with a bit more pressure. And again, you can probably see it's very rough. This is smooth, this rough. Great for doing raised panel lining because it feels just like raised panel lining, to be honest. So yeah, okay, let's just try one more. The devil's advocate here. Let's try point three, somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> okay, so this is the point three. So the point three, just for record, if you notice here, it's got a little bit of yellow on it. So if you look at the color here, it's got a point three, and this one has got a little bit of blue showing that it's the point one. So we can actually see what size of uh, blade is in here. Okay, let's pop that one in. Okay, let's try this. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that straightforward, no problem at all. So yeah, I actually like that. Point three, very, very nice. Okay, let's just try it as a wiggle. Yeah, that's a lot, lot nicer. I'm just gonna try a very light pull. Yeah, that's actually really very nice indeed. So that's the point three. And we're just gonna last that, we'll try the point too, because to be honest, this one here is very, very scratchy. Okay, so this is the green. Okay, let's see if we got a good coat with this. Again, you can probably hear it and see it, it's very scratchy. It's not quite as bad as the other, and that cleans in very nicely. Let's just try that again. I'm just trying, the only trouble is these blades are so thin, you can hardly see 
when it's level because obviously you don't want any edge on it that pulled beautifully down in there i'm wondering if i had the blade not quite on we're going to go back to that point one but again very nice down in there and then this one's actually really nice for freehand as well yeah that's actually very very nice indeed so that is the point two okay i don't know if we can do this let's try it okay point two okay Zero point one. that's zero point three. okay very nice right let's have a go have a go at that point one again and see if we can get just a little bit more results as i said this is the first time i've ever had a go with this so I'm just trying to make sure we're giving it the best possible try. And it does do it, but I'll be honest with you, this is really raised. You can probably feel it, okay? So again, point two is fine. The others, no problem at all, very smooth. Actually, I would be inclined to probably use the 0.1 millimeter for doing raised detail because it gives that effect. It feels like raised detail. It looks like it. The others are totally, totally smooth. So yeah, a little bit odd on that one. So as I said, you've got the 0.1 now, and obviously we can use this holder. The 0.3, here's your yellow one. If we can do these, you see. This is just metal, so that's gonna be the 0.5 one down on there and then the green which was green thing is you need the little label to tell you what the color is so the green is 0.2 okay 0.2 we got on quite nicely so what we're going to do we're just going to switch over making sure that's in nicely okay let's get buster in here and we're just going to use buster in anger so as you can see buster's had a hard life let's just have a go as if we're picking out a new panel line that we've ruined. Actually, that's actually quite nice. I do like that. Okay, let's just try down here, Buster. Apologies. That's actually really nice. Okay, so let's just try and pop in as if we were putting in some... This has got a lot of paint on here and a lot of filler and you name it. You can see a little bit ripped through that one. Let's try that again. Again, this is going through multiple, multiple layers. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to try and cut through it all. That goes really nicely. Okay, let's just try a little bit of freehand work. actually works very nicely okay let's just do it and across the top so we can just get a, a feel for how these are going to go very good okay last check we're just going to try it up against because obviously the trouble you have when you try and get into areas right up against detail so for instance if you're coming in with a pea cutter you can't get in there because there's just not enough room okay so we're just going to try and butt this right up against here just to see how close we can get and yeah we can go right up to the actual area which is a nice touch that you can actually get the blade right in that corner which is to be honest where normally this one comes in because it can get right in the corner as well okay so yeah i can see its positives is it a new tool is it a new complete game changer ah i'm not sure the one mil is a little bit disappointing it doesn't have a really nice clean cut because this is the 0.15 mil uh which is the holly uh cutter uh, let me just use this one to put a wrench on it okay and then down in here you can see how clean and crisp that actually is and that's 0.15 no problem at all 
which is why I quite like the Holly ones. They are absolutely beautiful. The only trouble is I find them very unwieldy for trying to get into detail. You have to hold them in a nice comfortable place for you and sometimes that is not the best. Okay, and let's just put the trumpeter one up against it. And again, you can see even the cheap sort of five pound trumpeter one is really very, very nice indeed. You can probably see the, uh, the fleck coming off the bottom here. Okay, whereas, as I say, this is point two. You can see it does a really very nice job but actually I think in the smaller cut sizes, 0 0.15, 0 0.1 mil, I'm probably gonna stay where I am. But I do like the tool. The tool itself is very nice. It's very comfortable in the hand. I think it's very much more relaxing than the other styles of actually doing any type of rescribing work and stuff like that. But there we go. That is the uh, Tamiya's new craft tools range. Again, very expensive. Do I think it's worth the money? I don't know. Again, if you do a lot of scribing work and use it a lot, I'm sure you're going to get used to using the tool and you'll be good to go. But from my point of view, for the amount of time that I do it, uh, it's probably not going to be one of those things where I would want to invest 60, 70 pounds in something like this because I don't think it's a night and day change to some of my other stuff that I've got.